So for the materials for the spinner, uh, obviously you need a string of lights. I'm using two inch spacing, five volt seed pixels. Then I also have a, a strip of plastic sheet. It's just uh, thin, probably about uh, 30 seconds of an inch thick. I just cut a strip out from a sheet and then drew a line along punched holes and then cut across from each side. And what that does is um, provide a kind of a retaining mechanism because I chose to zigzag the pixels from the outer portion to the middle or near the middle and back out again. I did not put the lights in the center because it becomes so dense it's kind of hard to see them. So they just zigzag around the outside so this strip here just retains them. Then I also have <clears throat> four pieces of fencing material. Now I used just the simple stuff from Home Depot. It's two two by three inch rectangles. That seemed to work out well. Uh, this is, I think it's uh, like, uh, yeah, 16 gauge and it comes in a roll. So basically just cut strips along there. And so I made four strips and three of those are used for the, the outer ring and then one of them is used to kind of hold the shape a little bit. Because this is such lightweight material, it requires a little bit of extra support. So let me show you how I uh, put the frame together. It goes together really quick, less than 15 minutes. And then adding the lights, eh, probably another 15 minutes or so. So the fence material is three feet long or three feet high. And uh, these are three inch spa um, spacings going this direction. And I want 32 divisions, but the fencing has 12 uh, divisions. So what we are going to end up doing is overlapping the last section. So, so the two pieces will come together like this and overlap one section. And then the third connection, because there's one extra um, span there, it's going to overlap two instead of one at the very end. And that'll give an even 32 of these divisions for the spokes. So the first step is to join three of these pieces together to form the, the ring around the outside. So basically I'm going to take one end and bend the last row of pieces that stick out inwards and then on the other side I'll bend them the other direction. Okay so we've got on one end they're going up the other end they're going down and I'll do that on th three of the pieces. Now on the third piece, uh, because this uh, fencing is three feet wide, but I want 32 divisions here. On each end, we're going to bend the free pointy ends uh, upwards on one end, and then I'll flip it over and bend them down. Because this is the third piece, so I'm taking the second last uh, joint instead of the very last joint because there will be one additional overlap section. You could just cut it off but I leave it on there and then it's kind of like that little hook that it can help hold the spinner up. So to join these together we put a, a downward facing pair of hooks and overlap them. So this middle this section here is overlapped and you can see that on one end we have the free ends pointing up on the other side we have them pointed down and I'm just going to bend them around so that they wrap around these pieces that are sticking out and that'll hold it together without any other fasteners. So basically you just quickly wrap it around maybe pinch it to make it tighter I don't know if you can see that. So it's just basically wrapped around 
the post that's sticking up and then I just pinch it to press it a little bit more off again. Same with the other side, going the opposite direction. Just wrap it around, give it a pinch, and maybe pinch it this way to compress it. And then on the other two as well, and they're going the opposite direction. Okay, so that gives a sturdy connection. This is as if it was just one solid piece instead of two joined together. So we're going to do that again with, with the next section. Trying to get a different angle here. Okay, so again we're overlapping these. Usually I would just sit this on the floor and do it, but it, I'm trying to do the video, it's a little more awkward here, up in the air. Okay, so then twist this around, twist this one around, uh, pinch them just for tightness, and then the other side, pinch that one, or twist that one, twist that one. The 16 gauge fencing is stiff enough that it holds its shape, but it's pliable enough that it's easy to shape. Okay, so there's the other joint. So now we have one very long, uh, let's see, I guess that'd be a little bit less than nine feet long. Okay, now the final joint, like I said, we're gonna overlap it by two uh, segments instead of one. So I basically just kind of roll this thing around onto itself and then we do the same process. We overlap. Now this one, there's one extra segment that overlaps. So now we have the outer ring and I'm going to take the fourth piece and uh, fold it over at either end so that it can kind of clamp onto the ends. Now th this piece is going the, uh, the opposite direction so uh, the, the rim is like two inches wide, but these are three inch segments. So what I do is uh, about a quarter of an inch up, I, I just bend it over like this. Actually, it's more like about half an inch. Okay, so I bend that over like that. And then I'm going to do the same on the other end of that segment. So we have kind of a, like a hook or a, like a clamp, um, fold it over section here and the rim is going to sit in there and then I'll bend this down. So first let's do the other end of that. Okay, so just a quick 90 degree bend there and then one at the other end. Okay, so that's ready to accept the, the rim. So now I take the rim and I will hook it, hook this cross piece onto the rim. Kind of have to bend the pieces that stick out just to get it on there. Okay, so, so now it's hooked on there. There, that's a good view. And then I'm just gonna bend, fold this down a little bit so that it is locked onto the rim. Fold that down like that. Give it a little pinch, tighten it. And now I'll rotate it around and do the same thing on exactly the other side. So hook it on there. I kind of have to bend these pieces that stick out just to get it wrapped around there initially. And then fold this little upper piece down, just pinch it. So now that's clamped on there also. So now we have a rim with a cross piece to help hold it. So that's basically it for the rim part of this. The next step will be to take the plastic strip and I, I have 32 holes in here. Or no, I have 33 holes in here because one's going to overlap and these are 11 16th inch spacing so this whole strip was 24 inches minus about an inch and a half. I cut a little bit off. 
So there's uh, 33 holes. One's going to overlap, so I'm going to wrap this like this so that two of the holes overlap. Or no, one of the holes overlaps. Then I'm going to put a zip tie around it to hold the, the ring in place. Then I will set it in the center here and put the LEDs around the outside and just fish them in and hook them on the strap. On, on the, the last hole, I just trim off a little bit of this strap so it doesn't uh, block the holes. So now I'm going to take a zip tie and overlap the last hole, just wrap it and zip tie it so that we've got a ring for the center. Now there's one final step here, which is optional. Now these little posts are sticking out. And if this is going to be resting against the wall, then the, these can just be left as is, and then you've got a, like a three-quarter inch standoff, basically, to keep the prop off the wall a little bit to get a bit, bit more reflection. Or if you don't want to do that, because these might scratch up the wall, you can just bend them over, and then the prop will lie right against the wall, and then these won't scratch up quite as much. So that's what I did. I just bent these all, just go around the ring and bend them so that they're out of the way. So now the, the prop will rest flat against the wall. I don't bother bending the outer one, the front ones, but you could do that as well. I also bend this this one extra panel out a little bit and I can use it for to help hold the prop for mounting purposes. Okay, so there's the the whole set of uh, little posts bent over on the back side. So now this will lie flat against the wall.